Hello, and welcome back to ThatLittleRedHeadKid.com. First off, I want to uh, explain uh, why the absence I've had. Uh, I was trying to get uh, this uh, video uploaded a lot quicker, but we've had some computer difficulties here at, uh, well, can't really call it ThatLittleRedHeadKid.com studios because, well, the studio is all of, well, a bedroom. So, um, you don't even want to know what we've had to go through. We had to replace the entire computer system. But we're back up and running now, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I know I said this before, hopefully we're actually going to be able to get back into a semi-regular schedule here. So this is going to be my commentary on Pac-Man Serial Commercial. As one of my friends, uh, I'm going to be referring to something that my friend said when we were discussing this uh, a while back. So... First off, about Pac-Man cereal. A, of course you can't find it in the shelves anymore. So, because the thing was all just a big sugar bomb. And oh, let's, if we have a sugar bomb, so let's put even more sugar in there. Because, well, with a lifesaver lollipop, they're just going to be bouncing off the walls. So, um, physically where this was shot. This was actually shot in Manhattan. Like, Dead center almost in, in Manhattan. It was one of the few times that we that I didn't record on the outside. I actually recorded in Manhattan itself, not on the outskirts. The reason for that, if you listen in, to the commercial, there's absolutely no dialogue from the actors in the commercial itself. Uh, so since we knew it was going to be quiet and we didn't have to do anything with it, we just, they just, it was, I actually saw a studio apartment live up to its name. The the studio was part of an apartment, so it was kind of cool. Uh, unfortunately, it was really the only cool thing about the entire shoot. Um, how to put this politely so that I don't, uh, in the off chance that the director's watching, uh, it seemed that the director didn't particularly want to work with children. I'll put it that way politely. Uh, the director had a very definite vision, and uh, he did not have any patience, really, for for the children. He actually, my uh, co-star, he reduced to tears. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, obviously, I'm the big bully. It's one of the few times I got to be the bully in, in one of my commercials. So, I kind of like that. Um, as well as, here's a little behind the scenes on what on my first introduction into child labor laws uh, in in New York City especially and uh, they it was also pretty much instrumental in, in political leanings of seeing government bureaucracy and the only reason it's around is because to get to collect a paycheck and to make things as difficult as possible uh, as a minor before I had to go to any shoot in New York, I had to go see the labor board. And I, I, there was this one woman in particular that I always seemed to get, uh, that my mother and I always seemed to get, that she pretty much made it her mission in life to make it as difficult as possible for me to work. It wasn't me in particular. She just was trying to justify her own, her, her paycheck. Uh, she wore these rose-tinted glasses, and they, I always, even as a child, I was annoyed by them. I was like, what? WTF? Rose-tinted glasses? Okay. So, here's the thing. Uh, in the commercial, you're, you obviously, you notice there's a dog in the commercial. True story. Uh, what you have to do is you have to go into the child labor, or you have to go into the labor bureau and explain... This is my son. This is mom talking. Uh, this is my son, Stephen. He's going. He's he's been cast in a commercial on such and such a date between such and such a time. Uh, this is the brief synopsis of the commercial. They want to make sure that you're safe, obviously, and it's uh, they're very very emphatic about wanting to make sure you're safe to the point of paranoia, uh, and they expect the parents to get all this information ahead of time. Ridiculous bits of information on, for example, on the dog. Uh, we explained the situation and that there was going to be an animal present. And the first question out of this woman's mouth was, okay, when was the dog's, when were the last uh, shots for the dog? How are we supposed to know? Uh, well, how old is the dog? I don't know. Okay, well, who's the owner? 
I don't know. I don't care. So what this then results in is that she then decided that always this woman would call up the ad bureau. The ad bureau would have to track down the producer, the director, and determine all this and then get all the information before I was granted a work permit. It was a big hassle. Literally, before the day of the, sh you know, on a, before the shoot took place, we had to pull me out of school and devote almost an entire day just to filling out paperwork. You can tell I'm a little bitter about this. So that's what it's behind the scenes of of being a child actor in New York State. It's not glamorous. Um, and it's it, you kind of chase your own tail. Um, it's like put, putting your head in the fire. Um, you suspect it might be preferable and you might even grow to enjoy it over time rather than dealing with the bureaucrats. So I don't mean this would get political. I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know that being a child actor, you there's all these behind the scenes stuff and all these different departments that you have to work with. So. Um, Pac-Man cereal. What my friend had asked when I was when I showed him the commercial, and uh, we were instant messaging and chatting, he asked, "What the heck does Pac-Man cereal have to do with this folksy, bluesy, you know, Pac-Man made a sucker out of me free? What does blues have to do with Pac-Man cereal?" And I never thought about it that way, so I don't know. If you have an idea of what blues has to do with Pac-Man cereal other than blues and they had a blue background, I can figure that part out. But come on, that's a pretty thin stretch for like a, what, a 10-second spot at the end? So anyway, uh, if you can figure out what blues music has to do with Pac-Man cereal, please drop me a line. ThatLittleRedHeadedKid.com at gmail.com. Uh, excuse me. ThatLittleRedHeadedKid at gmail.com. And see, it's been so long since I've done this, I forget my own email address. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be recording uh, another commentary shortly. I promise this time. I can't imagine why it wouldn't take me any more than a couple days. Uh, I'm going to be uploading some more commercials, doing more com commentaries, and hopefully we will get back into the swinging, swing of things. Uh, we're pretty much from, from general barometer. Uh, we're probably about a third to just under half the way through all of my commercials. Um, I say that because probably over time the website is going to start to morph out of talking just about my commercials into talking about TV and movies that I've seen and commentary on, on the way that the entertainment industry is going. So. I uh, just wanted to let you know about that. It's probably not going to start happening for a while, but just so you know that if you do start to see some occasional uh, vids uh, from me not talking about commercials, you know why it's happening. Uh, I can't imagine just having 15 to 20 vids and then the website just languishing like it has for the last three months. Hopefully that will never happen again. I knock on wood. So. Anyway, this is dragging on. I'm rambling because I have no sense of time because I've been out of the thick of things here. So I'm going to end it now. Once again, that little redheaded kid at gmail.com. Drop me a line and uh, I'll get back to you. Thank you very much for watching and for sticking with me.